So most Austrians saw Galicia as an exotic, a foreign, and a distant, and I'd say also almost a hostile province, which in their eyes did not really belong to their world or their civilization. It was always kept in the mind sort of this, uh, what Karl Emil Franzus called it, half Asia, half Asian. And it, this is still sort of going through the heads of many Austrians. When Austria next Galicia, Viennese bureaucrats regarded it their duty to raise this backward province with the help of enlightenment and Western culture to the level of Western Europe of Austria. One of the most important tools of this mission was to become the German language. And there's a very early Austrian writer, quite interesting, a lawyer, Franz Kratter, who had gone to Galicia in the very early years and he wrote very famous letters about the present condition of Galicia, published in 1786. And there he writes, if then the German language is spread fully across the land, and through this the people are more familiar with our way of life and our morals, and are Germanized, so it will occur quite naturally that the next generation must already be less raw, less prone to alcoholism and idleness, less bigoted, less a slave, therefore more industrious, entrepreneurial, cleverer, cleaner, and more sociable. So this view of Galicia as a poor country, as a cultural desert, as a home of uncivilized and immature people, Poles, Ukrainians, and Jews alike, prejudiced many Austrians until the end. For most civil servants or officers to be sent to Galicia was equivalent to being banished, being sent to a penal colony. And here another quote from Josef Roth from his novel The Radetzky Marsh. Any strangers who came to this part of the world were slowly but irresistibly doomed. No one was a match for the swamp. Especially the Austrian officers in the garrisons along the border with Russia were prone to be sucked up and destroyed by this dangerous, strange world. Once again, uh, this uh, quote, and in the tedious, swampy remoteness of the garrison from time to time, an officer would fall prey to despair, cards, deaths, and sinister contacts. The cemeteries of the border garrisons held the bodies of many weak young men. So the swamp, which Josef Roth paints here, is of course a matter for, for the Galician way of life as being seen from the perspective of Vienna, a metaphor for laziness, idleness, for roads and villages drowning in mud, but also for the endemic corruption. <coughs> the experience of the First World War confirmed this negative stereotype. This I know actually from my own experience, because my stepfather, Hans Pollack, I carry his name, he had been serving in Galicia in the First World War. And he not very often spoke about Galicia. He didn't, didn't want to speak about his experience. He was there as a young uh, officer. But in his sporadic tales of the war, he painted a dismal picture of that far away foreign land. He remembered wide wooded uplands and impoverished hamlets where everything was built from wood, even the churches. I remember that this was for him the most surprising thing, you know, that the people were so poor, he thought they were so poor that they built the churches from wood. Because this in Austria is not to be imagined, you know, I mean, everybody, I mean, no wooden churches in Austria, of course.